Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Friday, uh, August 25th, 2017. My name is Ankur Shukla, and um, you're tuning in on the Clean Scalpel. Um, you know, my goal, as I've mentioned before, is to really uh, become a better technical surgeon for myself. And my real goal, again, is to make you start thinking about surgery as athletes think about their profession and how we should practice it. So last time I spoke a little bit about um, knot tying and just practicing knots with your hands. Um, again, a good rule of thumb is about 60 knots for every 60 seconds. It's hard to reach that goal, but I think if you can get close, you will have achieved enough motor memory in your hands to do it proficiently. Uh, but today we're gonna uh, change it up. Uh, we're gonna still focus on knot tying, but we're now gonna focus on instrument tying. Now, instrument tying is very different from knot tying in the fact that obviously you're using an instrument, but it's really used to tie knots in tiny places where you may not be able to bring either your finger or your knot, or as a bailout situation when you're tying down 5 or 6 o proline and you push a little bit too hard with your fingers and break the knot. So what you're left with is one very small strand and one larger strand, which hopefully you'll be able to close up. So let's get into it. Um, the things you'll need today, uh, simple things, you'll just need a pair of pickups. I have a uh, long needle driver here, uh, and we'll talk about that versus something shorter. Uh, I also have a Castro, just so we can demonstrate a little bit of uh, using uh, Castros for tying uh, shorter knots, and then just obviously some scissors. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. And the first thing we'll do, I also have a little bit of 2.0 silk that we're going to start using. OK, so instrument tying, I see it done often uh, by many people. And really, it's obvious when someone knows how to instrument tie versus when they don't, because it's really this awkwardness as well as the speed that just really makes it apparent. OK, so. One thing that instrument tying also helps you understand is how the knot really becomes crossed. So let's just start and I'll just show you a few examples of instrument tying. So I'm again putting it under um, my needle driver here and I'm just going to go through a few knots with you right here, okay? four and five knots. Okay, so that's five knots right there. Again, nothing special, didn't have to struggle too hard, can do it fairly quickly. But there are a few tenets in the process that I think everyone should really understand when they're doing instrument ties. So let's just go over the first tenet of instrument tying. And for this, I'll get another strand. So you will usually be left with two large strands while you're instrument tying. Now, a lot of people, what I see them doing is they'll loop around and then they'll go for the strand on the other side and then tie it down, okay? Which makes it very long. And subsequently, when you're tying the other one, you have to reach a lot further. And sometimes when you're in the wound, this knot may fall into a place where you not, may not be able to grab, okay? So that's the first thing I notice when people instrument tie incorrectly. Number one, that makes you look like you're struggling. So starting off, just get in the habit of making that knot short enough where it's easy for you to grab. And again, the shorter you make it, sometimes it'll almost stick up in the tissue, which makes it easier to grab. The longer it is, the further down it may fall. Okay, and that's very, it's not ideal. And you sometimes have to reach for the other side. Conversely, if you're working in a very small space with your left hand, it's hard to really get get over there. Okay, so the first thing you should always do when you're instrument tying is go ahead and pull the strand short. Now, step two of the instrument tie is there's two ways to wrap your suture around your instrument. I'll show you one way right now. Okay, my instrument stays still and I'm wrapping around twice, okay? I'll show you another way. The suture stays up, but now I'm gonna use my instrument 
to go around twice. Okay? So there's two different movements. So let's just look at it again. Instrument stays still, I'm moving my suture around. Or suture stays still, I'm moving my instrument around. Okay? Now, these are two separate motions, and, I, and I'll tell you that the if you use both motions, they're equally inefficient. But if you combine them, it actually makes it a much smoother knot. Okay? So let's just see that again. I'm doing both. I'm moving not only my hand with the suture, but also my hand with the instrument, okay? So much better than or, okay, so that's the difference. So first thing, again, you're going to make the knot small. You're going to use both the motion of the hand and the instrument to grab the suture. Now, the next portion is actually a little bit difficult for people to understand, so I'll simplify it. Anytime you have, especially the first knot, which is usually a surgical knot, which you take two turns with, you always want to work inside the V. So you guys can see the V right here, okay? So I grab it, and then I'm just going to cross my hand and my instrument, okay? And what that will do is that will force the knot to lay down square. Can everyone see that? Okay. So. Now, I left this a little bit too long for myself, and I did it on purpose because I wanted you to know that when this happens, make it easy for yourselves. Get, grab a scissor and just make it shorter, okay? It will make you look slicker in the long run. Now, so you got a shorter suture. Um, let me just cut this out so it doesn't confuse people. You got a shorter suture. And again, what you want to do to remember is you want to work inside the V. So the V is this, okay? So if I'm going to work inside it, my instrument goes back in the middle. And again, I do my loop and I grab. Again, I'm inside the V and I'm going to cross my hands again, okay? So here's the V. I'm working inside and crossing, okay? And the nice thing is, is you can actually turn your body as you're doing some of these motions to make it make it a simpler motion. So instead of being awkward, I can move my hand around, and that way I'm always working inside the V, and I'm crossing. Okay, inside the V, crossing. Inside the V, crossing. Inside the V, crossing. Now, some people may be concerned that, hey, is there a possibility of me usually breaking the suture, especially with 5-0s and 6-0s? And the answer to that is yes. And as we reviewed in the first time we were tying knots with your hand, conceptually it's still the same. You always want to bring, imagine this is an extension of your finger, you want to bring this below the level of the knot, okay? And that's how you check to see if it's tight which is also the reason why if you have this very long, it's hard to bring that below the level of the knot. You might be in a tissue plane that does not allow that without getting into injury, or you may be pushing it blindly. So if that happens, what you can do is actually grab, either cut it like I have here, or grab it much closer to where the knot is and push it down, okay? So let's just run that a few more times here. We'll cut this out. Okay. Back to here. So again, getting it short. I'm crossing. That's a square knot. Working inside the V. Crossing. Crossing. And you notice that I'm actually grabbing a little bit closer because. can send it out and then bring it down. If you grab it too close, then you will have a hard time, like I did in last time, bringing everything through and you'll get stuck, okay? So you wanna make sure it's, it's long enough that you're able to grab it and move it through, but not too long where it looks awkward moving things back and forth. So this is instrument tying. Again, I'm not struggling, but you should be able to put down 
at least 10 or 15 knots in a minute. Okay. So that's this with especially uh, a small hemostat. Now, imagine you're in a belly, you're uh, tying down a posterior wall of the aorta, and you happen to break your 3 proline. And the best way you've figured that you, you can salvage it is by instrument tying it down. Well, then again, you'll be forced to use something much longer. Ideally, just remember, if you do get into a situation and you're forced to use longer instruments to get to the point where you're trying to reach, you have to make sure that the suture you're using is long enough. Now, let's assume that it's not long enough. What do you do? Because then it becomes very difficult to grab a bigger instrument and do what we've done before to reach back there. Well, this is again where the conceptual, conceptualizing the fact that you want to use both your hand and the instrument. So come way back to the strand and make a small loop there because you may not have a lot to work with. Then you can use the longer driver to just send it through your loops, okay? Grab. And again, continue with instrument tying. Okay, so again, working way back. Bring it down and around. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about using our Castro's. And typically, the situation that you'll get put in is that you've run two strands. to uh, meet at the midpoint of an anastomosis. And this may be a little bit hard for you guys to see and I apologize for that. Okay, but you go to tie it down and again by pulling too hard you break a strand short. And I'd love to break it for you, but I guess I didn't eat my Wheaties today. Okay. So here we go. Now you have a, you have a much shorter strand, which I know it might be a little bit hard for you to see, but here's a shorter strand. Again, not much room to work with. And here's our longer strand, okay? So again, you want to practice this, again, with something very, very fine. Conceptually, it's still the same, okay? Work inside the V go down, grab, and remember you always want to bring your hand with the driver below the level of the knot, okay? And I can feel that moving in. Now make it easy for yourself, especially with something like proline, it has memory. So when you push it down, bring it up to a point where it'll be easier for you to grab, okay? So I make it, I grab it, I cross my hands and bring it down. Again, lock, push it down in place, but now I'm pulling that strand up so it's easier for me to grab. Okay. That's three. Crossing down, but then I'm pulling back up. Four. And five. Okay. So, That's really the basics of instrument tying. Now, um, especially when you're throwing vertical or horizontal mattress in the skin, it's a nice uh, technique to use because number one, you'll save suture. Um, especially when you get yourself into trouble with breaking proline um, down in anastomosis, it's a nice way to bail yourself out so you can still use the same strands and still uh, finish the anastomosis without having to over sew or retie a second portion of this. Um, well, I think the best thing again is to practice these things in 
uh, ex vivo setting uh, just so you're more comfortable when you get to this in a patient. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, we're going to keep going with some other episodes talking about some other techniques and uh, until then we'll see you.